Hello, hello. And welcome to the first episode of Questions and Answers. <laughs> Before we begin, I would like to say big thanks to everyone who's following me on Instagram, on TikTok, everyone who reads my free online textbook, and of course everyone who is subscribed to my YouTube channel. Thank you for your comments, your likes, for telling your friends about me. Now I'm feeling like we have some sort of community. I'm starting to remember the names of my regular followers, and I would also like to say big thanks to Alicia for inviting her classmates to join our little community. So, thank you guys. Also, I would like to say big thanks to my viewers in India. 10% of my viewers on YouTube are from India, so thank you very much, guys, for your support and your views. By the way, only 30% of my viewers are subscribed to my channel, so 70%. Hello, please, hit the subscribe button and like this video. So, the way this format works is every once in a while I create a post on YouTube and on my Instagram where you have a chance to ask a question that I will definitely answer. Some time ago I created a post, I collected all your questions, and today is the day when I'm answering them. Let's go! Aisha NNE is asking, what should paper 1, 2 and 3 have? Well, I assume if you ask me about papers 1, 2 and 3, then you're talking about the new syllabus, first exam 2024. That is why now I'm gonna be talking about new syllabus 2024. Also, if you're asking me about papers 1, 2 and 3, I will be talking about higher level exam, because standard level students only have two papers. So once again, now I'll be talking about higher level exam, first exam 2024, new syllabus. Paper 1 is worth 30 marks and it is 25% of your final overall grade for IB Business Management. What you have in that paper is, first of all, pre-released statement. Basically, this is a case study that you can read one or two months before the exam. So make yourself familiar with this case study, because in the exam you will not have enough time to read that case study. Paper 1 has two sections, section A and section B. Section A is worth 20 marks and it includes 2-point questions, 4-point questions and 6-point questions. Section B is worth 10 marks and it includes only one 10-point question. Paper 2 is worth 50 marks and it's worth 30% of the final grade. In Paper 2 you also have two sections, Section A and Section B. Section A is worth 30 marks and it has 1 point, 2 point, 4 point and 6 point questions. Section B is worth 20 marks and it includes 2 point, 4 point, 6 point and 10 point questions. And finally, paper 3 is only for higher level students, it's worth 25 marks and it's worth 25% of your overall grade. This paper is based on a case study about social enterprise. If you do not remember what social enterprise is, then please find a video 1.2 on my YouTube channel and see what social enterprise is. Paper 3, that is based on a case study about a social enterprise, includes 2 point, 4 point and 6 point questions that total have 8 marks. It can be a different combination. For example, six-point question and a two-point question, or, I don't know, four two-point questions, or two four-point questions, different combinations. And it also includes one 17-point question. It's like an extended response with a suggestion, with a recommendation, how to ensure sustainability of a social enterprise. Here's a summary for you, feel free to screenshot it and share with your classmates. Next question. Martin Rada 1 is asking, hello, I've got some questions. 1. Labor turnover rate. Are positions with a fixed term contract counted there as well? Meaning, if a company hires somebody for 5 months, do we count that person in the number of employees leaving after 5 months? The short answer is whatever makes sense. Labor turnover does not have to be calculated for one year. You can count monthly labor turnover. So if for that organization most people work part-time, then maybe monthly turnover makes more sense. If most of the staff works full-time for long-term contracts, then maybe you just exclude part-time workers from the labor turnover. But don't worry, IB questions will be really straightforward and I'm sure you will not have to think about that in the exam. Two. 
How do we know what tool we should use on the exams? Is it always gonna be asked in the question? First of all, the most important thing is that you should understand the purpose of all tools, techniques and theories in the IB business management syllabus. If you know how you're supposed to use them, what they are for, what their advantages and disadvantages are, then you will be able to recall all tools, techniques and theories, TTT, even if you're not asked about them. So it's always a good idea to talk about other business tools and to apply them, even if you're not asked directly to do that. So you will not always be asked to use a specific business tool, but feel free to use it anyway. And three, what are your tips for scoring high on IA? Anyway, thank you so much for your help. My pleasure. The main tip for me to score high in internal assessment is to have a look at assessment criteria for internal assessment and understand what they actually mean. If you know what the IB actually wants from you, you will be able to provide it. So the key to success is assessment criteria. Next question. Laya Mohammed is asking, I really have a struggle with business management since we didn't have a teacher for a long time due to some reasons, and I'm so behind. Can you give some advices? Absolutely. That's why I have my YouTube channel and my chapter notes on my Instagram and a free online textbook. So my advice is don't panic and watch my videos. Next question. Alicia Mueller. Hi, Alicia. Thank you for all your comments, for appreciation of what I'm doing and for bringing your classmates. Hello. When will you have the videos notes for Unit 4 Marketing? Yes, please. Yes, that's really help. We skipped U2 and U3 and we have an exam on marketing in Fab and your videos literally saved my grade. Yes, please. I need help with this unit. Yes, please. Okay guys, the good news is that I've already started working on marketing on the first chapter of that unit, 4.1, so it will be coming out soon in March, and then it takes me about 2-3 weeks for one video, so then later on I will post all the videos from the marketing unit, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, and etc. So stay tuned. And I'm sorry that you probably already had your exams and you had to prepare to them without my chapter notes and videos, but I have a full-time job and what I'm doing now is actually my hobby. So please bear with me, be patient, all the units will be there sooner or later. Next question. Aisha Nu is asking, is researching only one company for QGIS enough? Or should we research two different companies? Well, it depends. The way it works in my class is I make sure that students are divided into groups, at least two groups, and we have at least two different companies, depending on the class size. If the class is large, then different groups can study four different companies or five different companies. But ideally, in your class, you should have at least two different groups that study two different companies, because if you did research on one company, you might not know everything about that company. For example, you might not know the cultural aspect of it very well, but your classmates might know cultural aspect of their company very well, and when you share your findings with each other, or if you do QGIS presentation, if you do it, we do it in my class, then you will basically help each other. So my advice would be to make sure that in your class you study at least two different companies for QGIS essay and you share, because sharing is caring. Next question. L. Cott is asking, how do I improve in 10 mark questions? I keep getting 6 out of 10. Well, there are no secrets and my advice would be, again, to understand the assessment criteria. If you understand what IB wants from you, just give it to them. Let's have a look at assessment criteria. So, if you want to score 9 or 10, if you want to score maximum mark, then your answer should include four things. By the way, now I'm talking about new syllabus, again, first exam 2024. For the old syllabus, it's pretty similar though, so we might say that it applies to both. First, clear focus on understanding the demands of the question. It means that you should demonstrate that you understand what the question is about and you use relevant business tools, techniques and theories in your answer. 
and you examine the thing that you are supposed to examine. Second, relevant and accurate use of business management tools and theories. It means that whatever tool, technique or theory you use in your answer, you use it right. Three, relevant information from the stimulus material is integrated effectively to support the argument. I would say for my students, this is the most challenging part. You should always use the examples from the case study to make your answer unique, to make sure your answer applies only to the case study, only to the company or any other organization from the case study. There is a very simple way how to make sure you do it right. If you read your answer and replace the name of the company with another company, Coca-Cola or Apple, and your answer still makes sense, it means that your answer is too general, it's not specific. So make sure that whatever your response includes only applies to the organization from the case study. And four, arguments are substantiated and balanced with an explanation of the limitations of the case study or stimulus material. So you know what balanced analysis is, right? So make sure you consider things from the one hand and from the other hand. There is a slap rule that you can use. You can consider different business decisions in terms of stakeholders, internal versus external, or time, short term versus long term, or advantages and disadvantages, or costs and benefits, and then you can sum it up using the priorities of the organization. And in the new syllabus, you're also supposed to write something about the limitations of the case study. For example, what kind of information you might need to give a more balanced answer. So the way we do it in my class is I ask my students to make sure their answers to 10 mark questions include at least three points of argument or POA. So in each POA, you should start it with stating what you are going to examine, what is the topic of that POA. For example, I think that first of all, that issue has to be considered from the stakeholders perspective. The internal stakeholders will be impacted positively because blah, blah, blah. However, the external stakeholders will be impacted negatively because of blah, blah, blah. So state the topic, explain why this topic is relevant and important and analyze it in a balanced way, on the one hand, on the other hand. Also, it's really important to use business tools, techniques and theories in your answer, use the right vocabulary and, of course, examples from the case study. Then after that, you do the same thing, but from a different perspective. For example, if in the first paragraph you used stakeholders perspective in your answer, in the second paragraph, you may use long-term and short-term perspective. Topic can be anything that you think is relevant. And overall, you should have two or three POAs, point of arguments, and they should be well developed. All of them should be balanced. All of them should include examples from the case study and business tools, techniques and theories. And finally, you have to write a very good conclusion. If there is no conclusion and your answer is brilliant, but without conclusion, maximum you can get is six marks. So what your conclusion should have is, first of all, the priority. So if the question asks you, should you go for option one or option two, then you have to say that the organization's priority is blah, blah, blah. Maybe it can come from the case study, if the case study says the mission statement of an, of an organization, for example. Or if case study is not clear about the priorities, about the mission statement, or goals, then you can make an assumption, but make sure you explain why you think this is the organization's priority. Then, once you stated the priority, you should answer the question. If it asks you option one or option two, then you say option one or option two. So make sure your response includes explicit answer to the question. Thirdly, remember you had points of argument and you consider things from both perspectives positive and negative or long-term and short-term. So it's a good idea to address the negative sides of the issue, the however parts, in your conclusion. You might want to get back to these drawbacks and suggest a way how to improve them. And lastly, if we're talking about the exam for the new syllabus, you should acknowledge the limitations of the case study. For example, what kind of information might help you to give a more balanced answer. I hope it helps. Here's a summary of what I've just said. L. Cott is asking another question. How do I approach and structure an IA on the ethics of Google's data mining? Well, regardless of what your internal assessment is about, 
it should always include three parts – introduction, body and conclusion. In the body, in the main body, the main part of your internal assessment, it should include the following things. Methodology of data collection – how do you get data? Is it primary research or secondary research? Then methodology of analysis – which business tools, techniques and theories you use to analyze data. Then you should list out the findings from your supporting documents or from your primary data and then you should analyze them using the business tools. Here's a summary of what I've just said. Moving on to the next question. Phoebe Iglesias is asking how to approach each mark question 2, 4, 6, 10 plus what depth they intend to obtain in each answer. Matteo Garçon says yes please. Okay so here are some tips. Two point questions usually ask you to define something. So what you do is you define the term, just write one sentence, what the term actually means, then state an extra feature. For example, a publicly held company is a type of organization with limited liability. Then you stand a feature, an extra feature of that term. For example, public limited companies may have unlimited number of shareholders or the owners of companies are called shareholders. And thirdly, give an example, refer to the case study and find an example of a company from the case study. I hope it makes sense. Definition, feature, example. Four point questions are usually marked as two plus two. You're usually asked to identify and explain an advantage and disadvantage or two features of something. So it's two plus two. You get one mark for identifying advantage or disadvantage or feature or whatever the question asks. And you get a second mark for explanation. Do it twice and you will get two plus two, four marks. Now, six-point questions are marked as three plus three. Six-point questions usually ask you not to identify and explain, but to analyze something. So analysis is deeper than explanation. So you will score three marks if you identify something, whatever the question asks, if you explain whatever the question asks, and analyze it. How to analyze? You can consider two different perspectives, like in 10-mark questions that I talked about before. On the one hand, blah, blah, blah. On the other hand, blah, blah, blah. Then repeat the same thing for the second paragraph about the another advantage or disadvantage or feature or whatever the question asks, and you will get three plus three, six marks. With regards to 10 point question, I've already explained it in one of the previous questions. Please see my tips there. And most importantly, in all your answers, you should always refer to the case study. You should provide examples from the case study and you should show off your knowledge. So even though you are not asked directly, explicitly to use different business tools, techniques or theories or business vocabulary, you do it anyway, because your job in the exam is to show that you know a lot of stuff about business and you can consider things from different business aspects. So. Examples from the case study and knowledge show off apply to all questions. Two pointers, four pointers, six pointers and ten pointers, most importantly. Here's a summary of what I've just said. Oh, and by the way, I answered this question about the new syllabus. In the previous syllabus, the mark schemes are slightly different, but again, very similar to that. The one and only Komal is asking how to excel in paper 3. So again, if you ask me about paper 3, then I assume that you are a higher level student and you are learning the new syllabus, first exam 2024. So here's an answer. Understand assessment criteria. Again, most importantly, you should know what's expected from you and your teacher should provide you with assessment criteria. As you remember from the first question that I answered, there are two, four and six point questions in the first part of paper three. I've just explained in the previous question how to answer them and also there is a 17 point question so assessment criteria for that question are really important because it's 17 marks let's see these assessment criteria so criterion a four marks is reference to all resource materials make sure that you use examples from the case study and any additional information that follows the case study if your answer is purely theoretical even if it's completely right but does not use any examples, you will score zero for this criterion. So make sure your answer is full of examples. 
from old parts of the case study about the social enterprise in paper 3. B. Tools, techniques and theories. 4 marks. Again, you are supposed to demonstrate the knowledge of different business tools, techniques and theories even if you are not asked directly what kind of tools, techniques and theories you should use. Think about whatever is relevant. Motivation theories, decision tree or anything that, that is relevant and use it in your answer and use it well. In order to do that effectively, of course, you should understand the purpose of all business tools, techniques and theories, and you should understand the contents of business management course really well. Criterion C. Six marks. Evaluation, implications, trade-off. So you should evaluate whatever you are suggesting in your answer. Evaluation means critically reflect on that. What are the pros and cons? You should provide your opinion. You should say, I think that this is an effective way to reach a certain goal because blah, blah, blah. Not only show your opinion, but also justify it using examples from the case study and tools, techniques, and theories. Implications means that whatever suggestion you are making, you should consider implications to the stakeholders, to the entire organization, to individuals such as CEO, and maybe even time implications, short term and long term. So whatever suggestion you make, think about what comes with this suggestion and be critical. And lastly, trade-offs. Trade-offs means if the suggestion that you are making is implemented in the organization, what will organization have to give up? What are the trade-offs? What needs to be exchanged in order to make it happen? This is the most important criterion. It's worth six marks. Once again, evaluation, implications, trade-offs. In the last criterion, D is worth three marks. And the main tip here is sequence ideas coherently. It means that your answer should be structured well. It should be easy to understand and the ideas should flow well, you can start with introduction, then you can proceed to analyzing the current situation using tools, techniques, theories and providing examples from the case study. Then you may start talking about the suggestion that you are making, how to ensure sustainability of a social enterprise. And then you may conclude in the same way as for 10 point questions. But if your ideas are a little bit of everything in each paragraph, then probably you will not score high on that criterion. So these are the assessment criteria, make sure you understand them and make sure in your answer you do all of the things that I've just talked about. With regards to structure, let me summarize. First, identify needs and challenges of the organization. Second, recommend action plan. Third, evaluate your action plan and lastly, conclude. Make sure that whatever you are talking about includes examples from the case study and business tools, techniques and theories, even if you are not asked directly to use different tools. Use them anyway. Here's a summary of what I've just said. Next, Sorfina16 is asking time management advice on answering exam paper within time limit. So let's do simple mathematics. And again, now I'll be talking about the new exam, the new syllabus, first exam 2024. So if you are a standard level student, then for paper one, you have one hour, 30 minutes, and it's worth 30 marks. So you have three minutes for one mark. Of course, if it's a two point question, you probably will not spend six minutes answering that question. So you can save some time for more challenging questions like 10 point questions. But always keep that in mind that for one mark of the question, you have three minutes. For paper two standard level, you also have one hour 30 minutes, but it's worth 40 marks. So my advice would be to spend two minutes per mark. So again, if it's a six point question, six times two is 12 minutes. If you can finish question earlier, then save some time for more challenging 10 point question. Higher level paper one is exactly the same as for standard level, so the same advice applies. Three minutes per one mark. Paper two is one hour 45 minutes and it's worth 50 marks. So here again it's more challenging, you should allocate two minutes per one mark. In paper three is one hour 15 minutes, it's worth 25 marks, so again three minutes for one mark. But I suggest that for 17 point question you allocate more time, at least 40 minutes, and try to finish the previous questions before 17 pointer in a shorter time.
Next question. Jaden Re, what is the BMIA? So since you didn't specify the syllabus, if it's new or old, I'm gonna be talking about the new syllabus. First exam 2024. So internal assessment there is the same for higher level and standard level. It is a research project to solve a problem. So you find a company of your interest and this company should face some kind of problem that you should help to resolve. In order to resolve that problem, you should use different tools, techniques and theories, TTT again, plus conceptual lens. So as you hopefully know, there are four key concepts that underpin the entire syllabus of business management course. Change, creativity, ethics and sustainability. So you have to choose one concept that applies to your answer and analyze your suggestion through the prism of this concept. You can use primary or secondary or both primary and secondary research in your answer. I hope you know what it means. Primary is when you collect data yourself. Secondary is when you use sources that already exist. So, or you can use a combination of both methods. The business that you choose for that organization can be a small sole trader, like a corner shop in your neighborhood, or it can be a huge multinational company, whatever you like. Make sure you select three to five supporting documents and you attach them to the appendices at the end of your IA. These supporting documents should be the main sources of data. So if it's primary research, then your supporting documents can be questionnaire results, interview transcripts, maybe even one video transcript. If you use secondary research, then it should be articles or books. The structure of internal assessment is again the same, it's introduction, main body and conclusion. In main body, make sure you state the methodology of data collection, methodology of data analysis, you list your findings and you analyze them using business tools. I suggest you do not mix findings with analysis, this is not a very good strategy. First present the findings and then analyze them. And of course, first of all, understand assessment criteria for internal assessment to make sure you understand what's expected of you and how it's going to be marked. All teachers have to provide assessment criteria to all students. Next, Ryan Benhaj is asking, what do you think about the new paper 3 in BMHL? I think it's a good idea to put emphasis on social entrepreneurship, that business is not only a money-making machine, that it's also something that can help benefit the society, that it's something that can also pursue some social aims. Next question. How do I approach an extended essay in business management about corporate culture? Well, you approach it in the same way as any other business management extended essay about whatever it is. First of all, surprise, surprise, you need to understand the assessment criteria. Ask your teacher, he or she will give you the extract from extended essay guide with all the assessment criteria. Then you should develop methodology. How are you going to collect? data and you are supposed to use secondary research most of all and you can support it with primary or you don't have to include primary research at all so secondary research is completely fine secondary research is when you use data that already exists you use articles you use academic publications you don't collect data no questionnaires no service no interviews then you present your findings and then you analyze them using business tools, techniques and theories. Again, I suggest you do not put findings and analysis into one section. You'd better separate them. And after that, you answer the research question in your conclusion. Plus, the last assessment criterion for extended essay is about reflection. So make sure you fill in RPPF, research planning and progress form. I don't remember exactly what's RPPF. And make sure you are really reflective there. If in your RPPF, if in your reflections, you write what your tutor told you to do, then it's not really reflective. Think about the challenges. Think about the flow of your research. Think about what your original expectations were and how eventually you ended up writing your extended essay. How do I crack the BMIA and EE in business management? Question by Atanisha. Guess what I'm gonna say. 
understand assessment criteria. Let's have a look together. So for internal assessment, criterion A is worth five marks. By the way, whatever I'm talking about now applies to the new syllabus, first exam 2024. So for internal assessment, criterion A is worth five marks. You should integrate key concept. Make sure that you have a section that analyzes whatever you are writing about in your IA from the perspective of one of the key concepts change creativity, ethics, and sustainability. B, four marks. You should provide three to five good supporting documents, regardless of the research that you are using. Criterion C, four marks, tools, techniques, and theories. Make sure you use appropriate business tools, techniques, and theories, and you use them right. D, five marks, analyze and evaluate. Analyze means consider things from different perspectives, break them down on the one hand, on the other hand, evaluate means show some judgment. Do you personally think it's a good idea or not, and why? E. Three marks. Conclude. Answer research question. So your conclusion should explicitly answer the research question. It should not be a summary of what you wrote about before. It should be an answer, a justified answer with reference to analysis and findings. F. Two marks. Structure. As long as you have introduction, main body, conclusion, and the flow of ideas is easy to understand, you will score your two marks. Even if you write internal assessment about cats, you will still at least score two marks for structure, if ideas are structured well. In G, presentation, make sure you use one referencing system and you use it right, and make sure you follow the academic format in your paper. Now, extended essay. Criterion A, six marks. Topic, research question, methodology. Make sure the topic of your extended essay is clear and the topic of your extended essay should be examining a theory. You are not in any way examining the problem or issue that a business is facing. You are examining a business theory. This should be the focus of your extended essay. Yes, you use an organization as a case study to analyze business theory, but that's not the main point. The main point is to analyze business theory. Is it effective? Is it profitable? Or is it whatever applies? B. Six marks. TTT, which means tools, techniques, and theories. Of course, again, you have to use them well, and you have to use the relevant tools, techniques, and theories, and ideally they should be balanced. It should be a combination of quantitative and qualitative business tools. C. 12 marks. Research, analysis, evaluation. In your extended essay, it should make the impression that you did a thorough research, that you used a lot of sources and you understand what you're talking about. Also, it should include analysis all over the place with implications, balance on the one hand, on the other hand, and evaluation. You should state your opinion about different issues and justify your opinion. D. Four marks. Presentation. Use reference and system well, use academic format, have a title page, and all the required elements. E. Six marks. RPPF. As I mentioned earlier in one of the previous questions, you should be critical and reflective in your reflection form. Do not just say, my tutor told me to do this, so I did that. No, it's not about that. It's about your challenges, about your expectations, about how you changed your research. So be critical about what you're doing yourself in your extended essay. And most importantly, extended essay in business management should include three key elements. The first one is central tool, technique, or theory. This is what's in your research question. For example, to what extent lean production is efficient in Toyota? So your central theory in this case is lean production. If you don't know which theory you're analyzing, if your research question is, should Tesla enter Brazilian market or whatever, then it's a good research question for internal assessment, but not for extended essay. Extended essay is an academic paper. When you write IA, imagine you are writing for the company management. But when you write EE, imagine you are writing it to scientists, to the academic world. The second important element in your extended essay in business management is context, company. So you should use one company as a case study for analyzing the central business tool, technique, or theory. And the third element is analytic tools, techniques, and theories, other business tools that you use to analyze the effectiveness or profitability or efficiency of your central theory. If you don't have these three elements, do not start your extended essay. First, make sure you have central business tool, technique, or theory. You have context, the company, 
and you have analytic tools, techniques and theories. If you cannot solve this riddle, if you cannot put these three things together, then do not proceed with your extended essay. Uh, Tanisha asks another question. How do I write paper 1 and paper 2 style questions with past paper examples, please? Well, of course, I'm not going to share past papers with you because it is illegal. I'll get banned from all my social media if I do that. Your school probably bought Question Bank or purchased past paper case studies, or maybe you can find some other ways to get access to past papers, but I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Let me be very clear with you. And how to write paper one and paper two answers, I've already explained in one of the previous questions. Please use the time codes under this video if you are watching it on YouTube and see the corresponding questions. Aisha N and E, hard fire. Thank you. Lady Vovreth is asking, how do we revise for business? Is it just memorizing? Hell no, there's no memorizing. There's only understanding. Please do not waste your time memorizing stuff. Put your energy, invest your time into understanding business tools, techniques and theories. If after learning something, you feel like, oh, that makes sense, I understand it, then you reach the goal. Then you can just quickly review using the chapter summaries on my Instagram and everything will make sense to you. But if you're just memorizing, then there's no point. By the way, this advice applies to anything, not only business management. Isalola asks, how do you like all the concepts and QGIS in an essay and where are you from? Thank you for asking a personal question. Finally, someone wants to learn something about me, not only business management. I am originally from Russia and I lived in China for the past eight years. Now, with regards to QGIS concepts, I really like all the QGIS concepts. I think it's interesting not only to learn business, but to consider business issues using the perspective of six QGIS concepts. And if you are asking me if you should include all six concepts in one QGIS essay, then of course, no. You should only include one or two. And which concepts you should include in QGIS essay, it's written in the question. For example, using the company of your choice, analyze the impact of lean production on company culture and ethics, something like that. So in this case, you only refer to culture and ethics. So it's always one or two, depending on the question. Samarth Naradi, how should I approach 10 mark questions? Please see the previous question, question 6, if I'm not wrong. I've already answered this question. Manuela Rias Kosf, how to make a good essay in section C? I'm not sure again which syllabus you're asking me about and which uh, paper and which level. So, regardless of what you're asking me about, the key to success is understanding, assessment, criteria. If your question was about QGIS essay, then at the end of this video I'm gonna give you some tips. It's a bonus, because I feel like everyone wants to know how to write QGIS essay. If you are now DP1 student, you don't have QGIS essay. Relax. Who shot JJ 6281? Absolutely loved your IB business videos, really helped me with mine. But I have to ask, what got you interested in business to begin with? Thanks again for inquiring something about me personally. Well, nobody explained to me how business works when I was in high school, so I was really curious how it works. And I started exploring it myself and... Uh, I like business, so natural curiosity got me interested in that. And user Bo6005ms8m, is it necessary to have a balance between qualitative and quantitative business tools in IA? Not necessary. Assessment criteria do not say explicitly that there should be balance between qualitative and quantitative tools, but ideally, yes. 
it never hurts to have a balance between quantitative and qualitative. So if you're asking me what you should do, please use both quantitative and qualitative. And lastly, nobody actually asked this question, but I feel like a lot of you want to write QGIS essay really well, so I'm going to talk about it anyway. Again, it only applies to students who are currently DP2 who have QGIS essay. If you are now DP1 and your exam is happening next year, you don't have QGIS essay, so you can scroll the video to the next part. So, the key to success to everything in business management is understanding assessment criteria. For QGIS essay, which is paper 2, section C, both for higher level and standard level, there are five assessment criteria that check your knowledge, application, reasoning, structure, and individual and group perspective. These assessment criteria are called A, B, C, D, E, but it's hard to remember what they mean, so you can remember them as CAR-C. K for knowledge, A for application, R for reasoning, S for structure, I for individuals and groups perspective. For each criterion, you should do two things, so keep in mind this checklist. For knowledge, you should demonstrate knowledge of QGIS concepts, only one or two concepts from the question, okay, so read the exam question, it will include one or two QGIS concepts, and you should demonstrate knowledge of these one or two concepts only, not all QGIS concepts. And secondly, you should demonstrate knowledge of all tools, techniques, and theories that you use in your answer. Not only the tool, technique, theory from the question, but also other tools, techniques, theories that you use in your answer, that you weren't asked about. You're supposed to use them anyway to show off your knowledge. For application, you should apply the given QGIS concepts the given tools, techniques and theories and your own tools, techniques and theories in the context of the organization that you use for QGIS. This is an organization of your choice. So make sure that whatever concept you're talking about, you use it in the context of the organization that you selected. Make sure you give a lot of examples. Reasoning. Two things, again. First, do not let the examiner ask why. Make sure all the statements, judgments that you make are explained. All the reasons are explained. If examiner can write why, then that is no good. Then you will not score high on reasoning. And second thing, you should include balanced analysis of everything. Balanced analysis of implications to the organization, balanced analysis of implications to the group, stakeholder group, and balanced analysis of implications to an individual. The two things for structure are, first, fit-for-purpose paragraphs. Make sure that one paragraph in your essay is devoted to one idea only. And make sure you actually have paragraphs and keep one empty line between paragraphs. As an IB examiner, I can tell you that it makes it really easier to read it. And second thing for structure is three elements. Introduction, main body, conclusion. It doesn't mean three paragraphs, it means three elements. So you should have introduction, main body, and conclusion. Introduction is one paragraph, conclusion is one paragraph, but main body is at least four other paragraphs. I'll explain why four. And for individuals and group perspective, you should provide balanced analysis of a group perspective and balanced analysis of an individual perspective. Now, the suggested structure for QGIS essay, it's just my recommendation, it's not in any way an IB policy, this is just how I suggest my students approach QGIS essay, is this, six paragraphs. The first paragraph is introduction, where you say what your essay is going to be about, what you're going to examine, some key facts about your organization. Second paragraph is the first impact. For example, if the essay asks you to examine the impact of lean production on culture and ethics, then the first paragraph will be about the impact of lean production on culture, the first QGIS concept from the exam question. Make sure it's balanced. You not only examine the impact from one side, you have on the one hand and on the other hand. You have a however. Then the third paragraph is group perspective. Whatever you were talking about in the previous paragraph, think about the implications of it onto a group. Employees, local community, or whatever other relevant group. Make sure it's balanced as well. Then paragraph four is the second impact. So if the question was discuss the impact of lean production on culture and ethics, then the second impact would be the impact of lean production on ethics, the second QGIS concept. Again, make sure you use a lot of examples from the 
from the organization that you selected and make sure there is balanced analysis of implications to the organization. In the next paragraph, paragraph five, I suggest you analyze individual perspective of what you were talking about in the previous paragraph. Individual is, in most cases, the CEO, however, it doesn't have to be CEO. You may swap paragraphs three and five. You can first talk about individual perspective and then group perspective, or you can first consider two impacts and then group perspective and then individual perspective or the other way around. It doesn't really matter, but I suggest you have four paragraphs in the main body and make sure each of these paragraphs has balanced analysis. And the last paragraph, paragraph six, is conclusion. You can approach it in the same way as 10 mark question that I talked about in one of the previous questions. That's it. Wow. I finished. I answered all your questions. I do hope that it was really helpful and do not miss the next opportunity to ask questions and maybe next time we do that you can be more specific. Which syllabus are you asking me about? Old or new? Which level you are? The more specific the question is, the more specific the answer will be. And please do not ask me to share past papers. This is illegal. I'm not gonna do that. Now, thanks for watching. Please watch some of my other videos. Subscribe to all of my social media. Thanks again to the students from India who are 10% of my audience. Thanks to those 30% of my viewers who are subscribed. The remaining 70%, please subscribe now. It's never too late. <laughs> and uh, thanks to my regular followers, such as Alicia and her wonderful classmates. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye-bye. Shh. <laughs>